Hey kids, do you guys want to help me pull a joke on my neighbor Tom? Yeah, oh, excellent. Okay, now as you know, every time I mention a famous artist's name, Captain Comics always shows up in a flash and you know, I can't see. So what we're gonna do is I've taken this piece of paper right here and I've written a famous artist's name down, man. And I'm gonna have Tom read it aloud and you can guess what happens next. So shh, play along. Tom! Oh, hi Tom. Hi um, Joey. Someone stopped by the house today and delivered this message for you and asked if you could read it aloud. There's nothing on here. What do you mean? Uh, it, there's, it's, it's something on there. No, there's nothing on here. Yeah, there's something. Read it aloud. No, there's nothing on there. There's I'm telling you, there's something on there. Right there, it says it. Van Gogh. Captain Jones! <laughs> there's too many spots. <laughs> that was fun. Am I late? Who wants to know about Van Gogh? Hey, cartoon guy. If you want to paint a painting or you want to learn to draw, if you want to be creative like some artists that you saw, then where in the whole wide world should you go? To the cartoon guy! At the cartoon guy show. Captain Comics really clever, the professor's really smart, but their next door neighbor Tom, he doesn't care much for their art. So how can they Hi kids, welcome to the Cartoon Guy Show. Now, you guys have probably noticed the alphabet above my head, and that can only mean one thing. It's time for Alphabetoons! Now, with Alphabetoons, we need to choose a letter, but in order to avoid any head injuries, and I'm looking at you, letter B, we're gonna go ahead and start from the very beginning with the letter A. So come on here. Oh, there's an eye in my Sorry, eye! Sorry, Tom! <laughs> yeah, accident, you know? You guys didn't see anything. So, now, with our letter A, we need to think of an animal that begins with the letter A. <gasps> I didn't, no, 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 it was not on purpose, I'm so sorry. Okay, moving on, kids, uh, which uh, animals can you guys think of that begin with the letter A? Are you serious? That one, that one right there, alligator. I like alligators because, you know, it reminds me of that whole Captain Comics thing, you know, where he went black and white and he's like, rawr, 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 bunny rabbit. Come to think of it, that was kind of scary, <laughs> but I still like it. Okay, so now that we have our animal, we also have our letter. The next things that we need to do are to get out all of our drawing materials. So I'm gonna get out my eraser. That thing is heavy. Next thing we need is a well-sharpened pencil and I'm not going to poke my finger with that one again. Mm -mm. Also, we need to have something to draw on, so let's get out some blank sheets of paper. Check, because uh, if I start drawing on the desk again, you know, the guys from the art department get a little mad. They got to come in here and clean up everything. <laughs> also, we need to make sure that our desk is clean and well lit, because it's kind of hard to draw when you can't see anything. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, guys, so we're going to get started. Get my marker ready. And remember, I'm gonna use my marker, so I want you guys to make sure that you use your pencils in case you guys make any mistakes. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with a big letter A. So I'm gonna turn my paper sideways and I'm gonna draw a big letter A, but I'm gonna make sure that the legs of the letter A are really long. Now I'm gonna make the right leg just a little bit longer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the little horizontal line in, and there we go. We have ourselves our letter A. So you can turn your papers back around. Now it's time, we're gonna draw his <laughs> I just love that part. We're gonna draw his nose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a big letter C. Well, like not too big, but you know, kinda big. So we're gonna start right here at the top of this leg, and we're gonna come all the way around and stop right about there. Wait a minute, dude. Crocodiles have the rounded, or is it the flat, or is it alligators? You know what, it's a cartoon and everything. Look it up and everything, because, you know, learning more stuff is fun. <laughs> so next, we're gonna continue on. We're gonna draw these little things right here called nostrils. So I'm gonna come up over here, draw a letter C, 
And inside that letter C, I'm gonna put a straight line. Actually, it's kind of more like a little bit of a, at an angle. Where are you going? He wanted to start drawing too. He kept reminding me, he's like, hey, cartoon guy, you're not using your pencil. He's absolutely right. So also, we need to draw the other nostril on the other side. So we're gonna come over here, draw in part of our other letter C and a little bit of line inside there so our alligator can breathe. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the rest of his snout. We're gonna start right here at the bottom of this C and then we're gonna go all the way back and then we're gonna stop right there. Now we're gonna make sure we stop before we get to the top of the A. Next, we're gonna draw his lower jaw. I hate it when my mouth runs off like that. So we're gonna start right here at this leg of the A and we're gonna curve this line around and we're gonna follow that line all the way back up to the top of the A. Don't go any further than that, just get it right to the top of the A and we done. So next, we're gonna draw the top of the alligator's head. So I'm gonna come up here to the top of this part right here, and we are gonna draw a big letter C all the way around, and it's gonna come up underneath that part right there. So now we have our alligator going <laughs> Kind of like when you know, Captain Comics did that, you know, and he's like, yo, bunny. Come to think of it, was Captain Comics feeding that bunny to that <laughs> Anyways, so to keep moving on, we're going to go ahead and draw the alligator's eyes. Hopefully he doesn't see what I just saw. <laughs> now, the first eye we're going to draw is going to be more of an O shape, kind of like an oval. O, oval. <laughs> so we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a big oval inside there. Now, guys, once again, how many eyes do we have? That's right, we got two. I got four. See, you know, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Now we're gonna draw his other eye, but his other eye is really, really close to that first eye. So we're gonna draw a backward C right here. Do, 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 do. Now we need something like a direction that the alligator's looking in. Now I kind of think that he's looking that away somewhere because uh, with, that's a, where all the tasty fishies are. So we're gonna have him looking for the fishies. So we'll make sure his pupils, which we'll use another letter O, right about there. And we'll have another one right about there. So now he is looking completely that way, searching for some fish. Now we need to draw him his eyebrows. Do you guys have eyebrows? Everybody, y'all, you guys got eyebrows, that's so cute. But see, our alligator friend here, he doesn't have those big bushy eyebrows, you know, kind of like mine, you know, <laughs> real scary ones. He, well, we're gonna give him just little diagonal lines for his eyebrows. We'll just go one, two. So he's kind of like, hi, fishies. But, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, something is missing. What do you guys think is missing from our alligator right here? Do you guys all know? Somebody out there tell me. That's right, he's missing his teeth. We, we can't have an alligator with no teeth. So we're gonna use the letter V and give him some really sharp teeth. Now on the top, we're only gonna give him five teeth. You don't wanna go teeth and like give him like about five million teeth because that won't really look all that good on your drawing, will it? Mm -mm. No, it won't. Mm -mm. So let's get started, shall we? We'll go ahead and give one V, two, three, four, and five. So now we got some really nice looking chompers right there, but he needs his lower chompers. <laughs> but instead of giving him five, we're gonna change it up a little bit. This time we're only gonna give him four. So once again, we're gonna use that letter V. Come in here. One letter V, two letter V's, three letter V's, and four letter V's. He's so smiley. By the way, do you guys know why alligators like to smile? Because they got all them teeth and no toothbrush. Wait a minute. I think I've heard that joke before. Ah, well. So, next thing we need to do is we're going to go ahead and, well, actually, quick question, guys. We need a setting to kind of put them in. Does, does anybody know where alligators like to live or hang out? Really, the moon? Alligators don't live on the moon? I thought the professor canceled that project. Or did he? Anyways, okay, no, he's gonna live in a lake, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and draw in his neck with two diagonal lines. One right here, and one right here. 
Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the waves of the water. We're gonna take some letter W's and we're gonna have them curved lines. So everybody kind of kind of make that motion right there. It's kind of like a roller coaster, you know, just going whoa, whoa, whoa. We're gonna draw a couple of those, you know, to represent the waves. Wait a minute, waves, W, <laughs> I did it again. So come over here, whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's do another one, whoop, whoop, whoop. And maybe one more, whoop, whoop, whoop. So now we have ourselves, our alligator sitting in the water, looking over here at some fishies. Now for me, the drawing is done, but for you guys, the adventure continues on. You guys need to figure out what else is back there. Are there trees? Are there other alligators? Are there fish? You know, is, is this like a pool of water on the moon? But that's all up to you to decide. But the one thing that we need to do next is the most important rule of all. And what is that rule again, kids? That's right, sign your name. So I'm gonna put C, G, put the year. Now also, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting my stuff away because I like to go ahead and keep my drawings. I like to keep my drawings, you know, in my little cabinet over here. And then I later on put them in a folder. So if you guys have a folder at home, put all your drawings in there. It's a great way to keep a journal to also show how much you've improved. Ah, got that one. So the next thing you need to do is start to clean up your stuff, all your materials, for a couple reasons. One, for next time when you start to draw, your workspace is already clean. And number two, makes mommy and daddy very happy. They're like, oh, little Billy and Sally cleaned their rooms. I like that so much. Let's take them out and get them some pizza. Some pizza. That actually sounds kind of good. You know, I was going to teach you guys another lesson, but um, uh, I'm going to go get some pizza and uh, you guys uh, continue with your drawings. And by the way, with your drawings, send them to me. I want to see what they look like. Hey guys, can we get a lower third over here of our email address? Thank you. Kids, with parents' permission, send your completed artwork to this email address for a chance to have your artwork featured on an episode of the Cartoon Guy Show. And, uh, you know, I might be able to pull a few strings because uh, hey, I uh, do know the star of the show and everything. <laughs> so, I hope you guys have had a lot of fun today. And um, we, well, we talked about pizza earlier, and uh, I got to go eat some pizza. So, uh, you guys all keep drawing out there, and I will see you guys here next time on the Cartoon Guy Show. Toodles! It's an E. It's an A. E. It's spelled T H E. No, no, T H A N. No, a it's E. A. E. A. E. A. A. E. 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 Yeah, we need someone to prove that I'm right. Am I to assume this is about the pronunciation of the word van? Well, yeah, I think it's spelled with an E, but Stan over here thinks it's with an A. Actually, you're both right. You see, you're each giving spellings of a homonym or homophone. Those are two or more words that sound similar, but are pronounced differently and or spelled differently. The difference is in the context. Context? What does a tournament have to do with any of this? Not a contest, context. The meaning of a word. If I am to help you with your little debate, I think I have a trick that actually will be very helpful to you. Do you recognize this symbol? Yeah, that's the alligator. We use that in math class to show which number is bigger. That's right. You use this symbol to compare numbers. Now, what do these look like? Hmm, they look like direction, only without the word. That's right. You use this to convey the order that things happen. And in answer to your next question, you need only one vertical line on each. So if you want to compare something like he is taller than you, you use T-H-A-N. T-H-A-N. And 
If you want to use it in terms of conveying an order or something, like first you have dinner, then you have dessert, you use T-H-E-N. E-N. So you see, spelling is very simple. That's great and all, but um, you didn't answer a question. I didn't? No, because neither of those examples are the type of pizza crust we like. Mm -hmm. You mean thin crust? That's spelled T-H-I-N. back to Artist Tricks, where we teach you tricks that can be used by any artist of any level. So, we're going to get started with today, and this is going to be what I like to call SketchUp. Now, you probably wonder what SketchUp means. Now, does anybody out there play sports? Y you guys do? Excellent. Now, let me ask you this. When you're, before you play any sport, what's one thing that is a must before any kind of physical activity? Stretching. Stretching. That is it right there. You always stretch before any physical activity. Because if you don't stretch before any physical activity, you might pull a muscle and make, ah, I can't walk, I pulled a hamstring. And the same thing goes for artists as well. We don't want to get into a project and not go in there all warmed up. So you're probably asking yourself, hey cartoon guy, how can you possibly warm up before an art project? Do I have to heat up the paper or do I gotta like, you know, rub the pen two pencils together real fast? Well, if that's what you want to do, go for it. Weird. No, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the technique, which we've kind of mentioned before, SketchUp, which is kind of like warm up. We're gonna fill up a whole table full of circles. We're gonna have some big ones. We're gonna have some small ones. Then we're gonna have some ovals and whatnot. But instead of drawing like this, a lot of people like to just use their wrist to draw circles. Now, using your wrist to kind of draw, that's okay for smaller details, but when you want to draw big, you want to use your full arm motions. Now, can you guys do me a favor out there? Hold up your hands like you're holding an imaginary pencil, and we're gonna make circles with our full arm. So everybody start doing that. Oh, you, you guys are doing good, okay, yeah. Okay, you guys got it, you got it, excellent. So now what we're gonna do is on our paper, we're gonna go ahead and make a whole bunch of circles. Now, we're gonna use a technique called sketching. So these are not gonna be one solid line. It's gonna be a whole bunch of little circles all on top of circles. Now, if you go out of line, it's okay. This is called sketching. That's the whole point of it. Now we're gonna go on and we're gonna make some bigger ones. Make some smaller ones. Then make some ovals, like I said before. And then after you have a whole page full of circles, what you're gonna do is go back through, put in some guidelines. Make some of the characters looking up, down, side to side, three quarters, and put some doodle cartoon faces in there. You don't have to really worry that much about detail because it's just a quick warm up. So now that you guys are warmed up, I guess we can head back to the Cartoon Guy show. So um, come on guys, let's go. Welcome to the Comic Sanctum. The monsters and I are doing a little basic research. Yeah. And working on some skills that may help us out later on. Uh, research? I thought we were just killing time until our next trip. Yeah. Look, we need to be prepared. We need to actually be able to look at our research and find out what we need to do in our next journeys. How come you jump back, say, what's shaking? And then let them talk. It's much more than that, Dynamic. There's foresight, preparation to our journey. Right. You know how much time I put into wood shaking? About as much time as Vincent Van Gogh put into a single brush stroke. Who? Van Gogh. Um, isn't it pronounced Van Gogh? Don't be like that. Van Gogh. He was an amazing artist. He combined elements of art together, such as line, color, and shape. Yeah? Has he done anything that I might recognize? Well, you might recognize this 
painting here called The Bedroom. Hmm. It looks like someone's Instagram photo. Ah! No. It's a painting. Now, let's go back to 1888. We'll go meet Vincent Van Gogh. All right. Ready? Time to travel. Mr. Van Gogh? Goff. I uh, told you so. Well, Mr. Van Gogh. Uh, can I call you Vincent? Why did I know what to call you first? My apologies. I'm Captain Comics, and these are my associates, Static and Dynamic. What chicken? Well, if you weren't going to use it, so... I'm not going to use it because it's terrible. Great. More time travelers. What? Nothing. And Vincent will do just fine, Captain. Uh, might I also ask what you're doing here? Us? Uh, well, I was just telling my friends about your work, and especially that with color. And I just had to show them. So you brought them to my bedroom? Uh, uh, to be fair, you were in here. I can't apologize enough. I hope I didn't disturb your work or that of your roommate too much. Gauguin? He's not even here right now. He's in town trying to drum up some interest in our school. A, a school? <laughs> That's pretty ambitious. Well, it's more of a collective workshop, really, rather than a school. That sounds fantastic. Yes, well, for now, it's just Gauguin and I. But I'd like to think that my brother Theo is here with me in spirit. I was just doing a portrait of my room to send to him so that he could see how I'm getting on here in Arles. So, you say you're sending a picture to your brother to send him an update on what you're doing. Told you it was like Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, Mr. Van Gogh? Yes? Uh, I, I got a question. I'm all ears. <gasps> Um, how did your style come about? Well, as I said, I was looking at what they were doing in Paris, and the artists that I met there were being called Impressionists. And they were more focused on the subject of the moment rather than the detail. And the work was exquisite. And it spoke to me. Before, I was like so many other artists, simply trying to recreate what I saw around me in the same manner that everyone else saw it. But now, now I focus on putting on the canvas not just the subject that I see, and not just the moment that I see, but the feeling I have of that moment. And that is how I came to the style I use today. Why my lines aren't always straight, why my brushstrokes so varied, why my colors so unusual. See, everyone knows what the night sky looks like, but when they look at one of my paintings, I want them to say, that is how Van Gogh felt about the sky at that moment. Instagram. A what? A, a minor fad in photography back in the States. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Ah, well, I'm sure some enjoy it. And now, if you gentlemen don't mind, I'd like to get back to it before the moment passes. Not at all, Vincent. I mean, Mr. Van Gogh. Van, Van Gogh. Van Gogh. It's uh, time to travel. Captain Kelly! He's coming back. Yeah, he'll he'll be back. Ugh. Yeah, yeah.